Well, friendly hellos and welcome to the first allocator call taking place for the Phil Plus program on August 6th. Let's take a look at what this call will cover. The main point we're going to hit farting off is org-wide strategies, check in on what the foundation is working on, and kind of give you an update on what to expect coming forward in 2025, followed by a really detailed review on the diligence process for current allocators hoping to renew data applications. So we'll go through the applications that were just approved with the amounts, check in on those applications we're working on in progress, and make sure that we're answering any questions, as well as give you some tips on how you can make this process really fast as we go forward into the second, third, and ongoing. And then we'll check in on two new proposals that have come up. The first has to do with what questions we're gathering from applications to make sure that that data works. And the second is a topic that we brought up on the last call, which is verifying the open public data sets that are coming on and how many copies we're storing. As always, if you have questions, there'll be plenty of time at the end of this call, or feel free to shoot a hand up as we go. We'll always make time for anything you'd like to discuss. So with that, this call is taking place August 6th. The next call will be on 20 August. If you haven't already, in the slides in the allocator and Phil Plus Slack, you'll see a calendar. If you add that, great way to keep current on what's taking place. As far as changes to the program week over week, We've seen seven new clients come through in that two-week span, resulting in 18 petabytes distributed, and we have 51 active allocators in that period out of 72 total. You remember that we started with around 86. Some were removed for inactivity. Some were removed for diligence. So we have about 72 active allocators, 51 in this current period. So with that, quick touch base on the foundation OKRs coming out of 2025 that are being iterated. So the foundation took a week to kind of work on what were the priorities that were going to be driving forward in 2025 and how do we get there as an organization. So at a very high level, the three that we're going to be driving all other OKRs around are these three that you see right now. And for Phil Plus, the Make Filecoin Work Seamlessly is going to be our top priority. Some of the comments that we've heard from allocators and organizations was the time from application to getting on board the program needs to be faster and the data cap refresh process needs to be more streamlined. So we hear you on that. Thank you for the feedback. Moving from the old LDN model to this new organization structure requires essentially an audit of every application with every organization that does things a little bit different. So lots of lessons learned in this first quarter as we've kicked that off. And now what we're working to do is make this faster. So the process would be for an organization or an allocator They've gotten close to their data cap. It should be very quickly when they hit that button. So you can always count on that data cap being renewed. And then the second point you see, ensure Filecoin Foundation's long-term stability. That really kind of comes back to backing up the storage providers, backing up the allocators, backing up the client applications so that there's seamless information between all three of you. So we've been doing a lot of updates to the documentation. You're going to see a lot more to come. And then ideally, if you have a client that wish to get involved in the Phil Plus program, they'll have a one-stop shop for them to come to phil.org and really go through it. And then taking a look at the regulatory headwinds. I know a lot of you were impacted by ST Phil this last year. So what can the foundation do to help minimate this and work forward for everybody? So I'm looking forward to sharing a roadmap once we build off of these high-level OKRs. But if you have feedback, comments, what you'd like to see in the program and making sure that the foundation is driving forward, please let us know. So with that, we had a new proposal that came through from the Fiddle team just yesterday about the client application refinement. So you might have seen this published by KZ yesterday in this proposal. We'll open this up and look at it. But essentially what we're seeing is when this application gets filed, we don't have a lot of information about what specifically will be covered in that application. So if I open this proposal that KZ put together, what he's calling for is a call to action for the data prep review. So as you can see, they've been working on their open data sets for a while. And what they've been seeing is like, what specific data sets are gonna be stored? And then how will that data set be transformed and worked so right now, when we have a lot of these questions that come through, we ask really basic stuff. What's the organization? Where is the data set going to be held? What this proposal is essentially looking for is how will that be a lot more specific 
And the benefit for you for filling this out and kind of making your voices heard is this makes that review process so much faster for the data cap. So right here in chat, I've shared this issue 125. KZ also posted this in the Allocator Slack channel. I highly recommend you take a look, leave any feedback. It looks like DStore, you've already started to do that today. Thank you for that. And this is helpful for like really getting this data cap refresh as quick as possible. We'll talk about this call, why sometimes that may not be as fast as we all would like it to be. So let's dive into data cap refresh. So Galen posted this comment about five days ago, and essentially all of the organizations that were outstanding are now kind of waiting for their distributions or have had an update for it. I've summarized some of those right here, but there's also the issue that was filed by Galen. I'll put it right here in the screen share so we could see. And he kind of broke down each one of the organizations, how much data cap is coming through. Right now, all we're doing is we're waiting for the Lotus update to come through, and then you'll be able to see that distribution. So if you don't see it today, you should see it the next couple of hours as it comes back. But again, we're just waiting on Lotus to finalize this distribution as it comes back. If you're an allocator or an organization, you're gonna see that you're left a comment in each one of your community reviews that go forward. And it's really looking at four main areas. So this shouldn't be a secret. Can we see a record of the diligence in your bookkeeping? Can we verify the SPs that you worked with? Do you have a distribution schedule that you stuck with? And is the data retrievable? What we're doing is we're just comparing that for what you said would take place in the application. So if you're really looking to fast track this when you list these, and Mike, you did a really good job on yours with your third round, is just kind of spell these out to make sure that it doesn't take time for us to go back and pull it ourselves. So for retrieval, tell us what the retrieval percentage was in your Spark reports right there in your refresh. We're not looking for the CID pools. We're looking for the Spark retrievability to kind of verify that this data set is public and retrievable. Second is make sure that your bookkeeping repo is up to date. This is probably one of the most common issues for delay is that if we have an organization that's looking for this data cap refresh, we come into the bookkeeping repo and there's no information there. It makes it really time consuming to either look for it ourselves or come back. So every distribution should tie back to a client request where it's public and it can be viewed. If you have your own system for doing this at the very bare minimum, it should just be shared in your bookkeeping repo. Hey, we had a request from this organization. This is the schedule. This is why we approved it. And then this way, we're not having to constantly ping and get that information back. The third has to do with the SPs align with that application schedule. So if you say you're going to work with SPs of these organizations and regions, but when we actually get the data back, it's not those SPs or it's a much smaller number. Again, what that triggers is a review, and that triggers like more detailed and more time that goes back. So if there is a change to the SPs, just list it in your client review discussion or in the actual application. What was the reason for this? And this will make it a lot faster. And the last is how much data cap is being dispersed for that application. In the first rounds, we were very forgiving. If one petabyte went out the door and then two petabytes went out the door, but now on the second and third and ongoing, we're really gonna be looking for that distribution schedule that you set up. And specifically what we're looking for is that it increases with trust, which means if you work with an organization, ideally it starts off with small amounts and as they build trust with you and their documentation and storage, you can increase that to start giving that out. Again, as a reminder, as an allocator, it's on you to go back and look at those deals that were made and make sure that those storage providers stored that data the way that they said they would. And if not, please send them a ping, let them know that you're gonna be the one that's held accountable for that. And you cannot allocate additional data cap if they don't maintain those standards. So putting that in your review makes it so much faster as we go through it, makes it gonna get automated. And what we're trying to do is get this down to a process where it takes days, not weeks to kind of go through these. And as we build these lessons learned, that's what we're hoping. So I'll pause since I know some of you on the call were in this boat of getting your new applications or getting your data cap refresh and see if there's anything specific you'd like to look at or go over. Uh, hi, Kevin. 
Yeah, I can hear you. Floor is yours. Uh, this is Irma from Anilabs, and uh, my colleague Leo has mentioned our allocator review in the uh, the GitHub. And uh, do you mind take a look at the uh, share the screen? <clears throat> and we want to uh, kind explanation of the uh, diligence review of our allocator now. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah, that'd be great. One thing that would really help me since I have my screen sharing going, if you could drop that link in chat, I'll pull okay. it up. Otherwise, when I screen share, it will take care of the cloud ride. Here it is. And uh, actually here you may see that, uh, sorry. Uh, I have attached the links through the chat. All right, grabbing that. And Hash, I see your question. We'll come to you next. Hold this over for you. All right, so we're looking at the community diligence review for ND Labs. Great. What would you like to go over on this before we dive into it? Um, yeah, actually, there uh, here we can see there are two issues was mentioned, uh, and the first one is uh, related to the KYB process, right? And uh, you may see the first issue, um, that link, uh, the number three, uh, this application was created quite early, and uh, the comments in this uh, application form, you may see that from really uh, early before that uh, there we at that time we didn't know we need to uh, di disclose our KYB process to the community uh, through the GitHub. So um, I remember that about one month ago after one uh, governor's call um, that everyone know that we have we have to public the KYB process uh, through the GitHub. So um, since since that uh, meeting. Uh, governor's call and uh, all our application forms have uh, strictly disclosed the KYB process for clients. <clears throat> and this is one issue. And the second one is about uh, the backups, right? And um, about this, e uh, the first one, the AIN project, um, they have nearly 10 copies. Uh, it's about uh, nine copies now. And uh, the second one, uh, second example now is quite, uh, it's kind of in early stage of their application, right? Uh, so uh, I think we can patiently wait for the clients to uh, increase their uh, SPs in the near future. Got it. Here's one thing that would make this a lot faster. So you can see the watchdog comment kind of lists this up. And one of the things that they spelled out was the, the KYB. So what that means is like a member of the governance team or the, the crews have to go through and find that. When you see that request for KYB, what would be really helpful is to leave a comment with here is the link to the KYC that we did, whether in GitHub or Drive, and for each application. That way we can verify the client requested it where you came back. So my recommendation is when we get off this call, leave that first comment. Here are the links to all of our KYC, KYB. That'd be sec the first one. And the second, okay. as far as the storage providers are concerned, this is going to happen. And we're well aware of this, is that when you get this client kind of maintaining it. So you kind of spelled that out a little bit last week with like, hey, we asked for three months after the data cap. It was buggy. We had this going forward kind of spell out why was the reason that there was these three or four SPs. And you kind of did that. Since the client is only assigned the first round, we acquired four nodes for the first round, the number will increase in the project. Yeah. So kind of keeping an update like, hey, we thought that we were going to have these SPs in these regions. We actually saw these other SPs in these other regions and spell that out right here in the issue. So let me ask you to do two things. The first would be leave a comment with the KYC that you provided to all these applications. And then I'll circle back to make sure that this ND labs for these 10 copies is good to go. But again, what we're looking for in these is that the retrieval number is increasing. We're trying to get that spark number up. We have the bookkeeping in that application and just an explanation on why the SPs change. So you're so close in that 
help us get to the finish line with you, and that'll make it a lot faster. Does that make sense, or is there anything else I could help with that? Um, yeah, absolutely makes sense. Wonderful. Once you do this, feel free to send me a ping in the Allocator Slack channel. I'd recommend avoiding the DMs just because when so many of those come through, it might be a little bit of a wait. I hate to make you wait on that. But if you okay. ping me in the Allocator Slack, once those are done, we'll take a look. But again, go ahead and post essentially where the KYC is, how that process is going. That'll be great. Yeah, uh, well, by the way, um, the second thing I want to mention that we have deployed a retrieval tool and uh, for our allocator. And uh, actually, the main fun function of this tool is to uh, actually the additional main function uh, is that we have the details information of about the retrieval rate. And uh, hold on, I will post the link here. And um, we have deployed deployed this uh tools about one month ago because uh this day is the uh, network update so it's kind of late and um the the this one is not the uh the data is not yet accurate uh, as we are still um in internal testing phase and uh also we have connect with um, some storage provider and other allocators to adjust it now so um, I believe it about in less than two weeks, we will release a um, good version and more reliable version. That's wonderful. Wonderful props. Um, may I ask whenever you do update it and it's all set to go, put a comment in the Allocator Slack channel. I'd love to, uh, to get other visibility on this. Thanks for putting this together. Okay. The one caveat to remember is a tool like this um, you need to be providing some information about what the perspective is, because this means your tool is able to retrieve data, but it doesn't necessarily imply that that data is retrievable to anyone else. And so if and so this won't work for public open data sets necessarily by itself, um, because it may mean that there's an ACL where only this specific bot is able to get access to things. Uh, yeah, no. when we are ready to public, we will uh, public a, a kind of technical doc docs to the communities. And uh, uh, thank you, Will. If if you have another suggestions, uh, feel free to ping me through Slack. Okay. That's great. One of the things just to foot stomp that Will said is please make sure that if you are using this for your retrieval verification, it does the same thing where we can verify this outside of this page. So sounds great. Ash, I see your question in uh, chat. So I'm going to pull it up. It looks like it's issue 999. Let's take a look together. And Mike, I see your question at 917 with issue 717. If you could link it, it'd be super helpful. All right, Hash, so we had this from three weeks ago, and you're spelling out for us the retrieval weights that came back, and you have some screenshots. We have the data cap triggered from three weeks ago on the first one, and we have a list of your storage providers and report, and then we see the average retrieval rate hovering around the 8 to 16 as we go through it. And then you talk about the data retrieval bait that went back with the steadily increasing from the 256 as it went up, and you have your screenshots from Spark as they go through it. Then we have the watchdog who pulls the report for the compliance. I'll open that up next. And then he points out again that we have this retrieval rates that are steadily reporting as we go out. So right now, what we're looking at here is that retrieval rate is getting better. So we went from about 12 up to 30 as we go back. And we look at that Spark as it comes back. So nice job on that as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and verify this. Again, what I'm going to be pulling is the allocator application verifying that this application here for the data all kind of comes back to your bookkeeping repo and that bookkeeping repo ties it. So I'm going to make a note. I'll leave a comment in this issue as well as in the Slack so you can kind of see it. But you should see this move forward pending any final questions. And what again, what you're pointing out is what we're looking for is that we realize with the Spark retrievability it's going to take some time to kind of get that to go from like 0 to 12 to 36. 
So you're really showing that as you go forward. So nicely done. And then having the links to the bookkeeping repositories also makes it really fast. So when you have these hash teams that come back, this makes it nice that we can open this up, see the application and kind of walk through that. So I'm going to take a look at this. Let me make a note here. If there's any final questions, we'll get back to you. But I think that you're kind of at the finish line with this one. So come back. And when you come back for your next refresh, just like you did before, kind of spelling this out in quick detail, like this was the application, here is the bookkeeping repo to that application, here is the retrievability rates. Again, makes it really, really quick for us to come back and say like, did the retrievability increase? Was there a bookkeeping repo and did the SPs align? So I'm gonna echo back on that and you should see movement really quick, at least with the question as it comes through. Thanks for asking that, Hash. Do you have any questions for me on that? All right. Anything comes up, the allocator channel is a great place to kind of let me know. Good job on that. We'll get you moved. And then, Eric, I got your message that the slide for this required a link. Tell you what, I'm going to pause for just one moment and fix that because I want you to be able to follow along and it should be that. So just one moment as I look away to pull that up for you. All right. I'm going to post the link here and I'll check why it's asking for the password, but that should make it good to go for you all to see this slide. And then it hash to close out yours. What we're looking at right now is that once all the review is done from the watchdog, from the governance, from the community, we have to wait for the data cap to be sent out from the root key holders. Sometimes there's tooling issues that come back. So realistically, if we put this in right now and go forward, it puts you in the queue with that data cap refresh. I'll send a ping to Galen to see what the status of that Lotus update is, but you should see that come through really anytime this week once that Lotus patch comes through. So Hash, to answer your question in chat, once we finalize that, we're just going to wait on Lotus to push out to you. All right. And then Mike, I see your question in chat about issue 117. Just so that I can make this a little bit fast as we go through, I've just got the one screen, so I'm not taking everybody on a ride. Can you please link that issue 117? I'll pull it up and we could talk about it. Otherwise, I need to come back to it. All right, Mike, you're the man. Thanks. All right, pulling this down. All right, so Mike, this is the RFIL allocator. This is your second time coming through on the review process. You linked your first one, you have your allocator report, and then you added all SPs for retrieval. About four days ago, which would have been around Friday, Saturday, what the watchdog pointed out was three things that kind of came back, is that we had a mixed evidence of diligence, so it was kind of hard to see where the clients were coming from, what the communication was, that the allocations were given despite non client deal making with minimal actions. So remember, it's on you to make sure that this is kind of compliant after that data cap goes out the door and that we couldn't verify the retrievability as we looked back. So I know I commented in Slack on this one as we looked back, but let's kind of spell this out step by step so we kind of learn to make these go forward. So you said that the 2.5 PIBs had gone to a previous client that had not shown the data set. And then you have this drive folder when we open up that drive folder, we see a series of videos, but there's not a lot of information on like, what is that data cap? So if we have these couple of videos that total around, you know, three or four gigs, it really doesn't make the case of like where that data set of one petabyte is kind of going to. So if you have additional information from this client, if they're asking for a petabyte, which is, as you know, an enormous sum of data, it should be linked to them on that. And it looks like, yeah, I see you in chat that you replied back. This is great. We're just kind of walking through these as we go back. And then as far as the retrievability on the data, you spelled out that the SPs were going to be downloaded by the car files. So this is what the watchdog was asking for. 
And so when you shared this, we have this comment where we can see some of this. What we're looking for is like, cool, who was this application? Where was this one petabyte going? And then how did you verify that that one petabyte was retrievable? So we have these screenshot. It looks like it's a WeChat or something that's going back. And we have that Google Drive, but that's nowhere near like where that one petabyte is. So we'll be looking for that. It looks like your clients had some issues with the ST fill incident. Sorry to hear that. It's probably a real difficult situation for everyone to be involved in. So you kind of spelled that out here with the SPs and the third time. And so really what they're looking for here for the watchdog is like, where did this data go as far as the retrievability list? And you kind of spelled that out that when you had 11 SPs, they wanted five copies. And then you put this review that you linked here in the application here with like, hey, we want to have this medical research institute coming back and you're going to keep an eye on that distribution which is just fine as we go forward on that and the last point that we had on this issue was the deal making quality so kind of taking a look at like what sps did we say the sps that kind of came out and followed and then more specifically what will you be doing differently if awarded this data cap on there so you kind of spelled out that like hey you're doing more issues on the spark retrievable what we're going to be looking at is like, what were your spark retrieval numbers in the first sets, the second sets? And now by the time we get to the third set, this should pretty much be worked out where you kind of have these kind of like listed for you. And yeah, you've kind of got that spelled out here where you have your data cap. Again, don't focus on the CID retrieval because that's not going to give you the full tone. So if your CID retrieval is saying 51%, we're going to be looking at the spark numbers that are coming back. So we have this 57, but that doesn't always paint the picture on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow up with the watchdog. And I think what we'll be looking for is just a comment on how that retrievability is getting better. So to kind of put a bow in this one, I'll get the spark numbers for you on this. And what we're looking for is how did that spark retrievability get better? And then are we showing that progress for you as you go forward? Feel free to leave a comment on that. It should be pretty straightforward. The spark retrievability numbers were 12%. Now they're up to 30 or they're staying the same and what your plan is for coming back. Does that sound good with you, Mike, or any additional things that I could get for you on that? All right, then I'll leave a comment in that issue and we'll try to get that fast track for you to fill. Pause here for one other moment if anybody has any questions on their refresh or any of the process to get you all set. All right. We talked about this on the last call, but just kind of putting this out there for anybody who's coming back. Essentially, we have 72 allocators in the fill plus program right now 51 of those are active at any given point in time we've removed nine for an activity so when we're looking at adding new allocators onto the fill plus program what we're really looking at for anybody who's looking to apply or come back to the program is that there's not a high need for additional manual allocators if there is a storage provider if there is a client application there are lots of existing pathways through Fiddle's pathway, through anyone with a number of manual allocators. So for this refresh, we're really not prioritizing anybody who's coming with a manual pathway because we have 50 of those right now. And what we're doing is we're really prioritizing active allocators for market-based or automated. So again, if you were an organization that might not have passed your diligence refresh, so you did not receive a data cap refresh and you're looking to come back, we will slowly be onboarding those, but they're not the priority given all the work we're doing with the data cap refresh right now and tooling and documentation. So again, if you are looking to become an allocator as a manual process, I highly recommend you check out Fiddle's Enterprise Pathway for any data cap that you're looking to bring on because right now there's just not a high need and we're really prioritizing allocators that are taking this different approach, whether it's tooling or market-based or experimental. So I know that that impacts two of you that are on the call that have submitted that application because you didn't qualify for the refresh. I'll kind of pause and see if you have any questions about how that process works.
All right. We talked about this last call. We're about to make a proposal. I just wanted to check on this one more time. So this is the second time we brought this discussion up. What we're seeing is a very high level of duplication with the same open data set, essentially common crawl duplicated 20, 25 plus times. So we're kind of gathering input before we make a proposal like the one you see with the client applications. And the question essentially is, is it helpful to have 25 copies of the same common crawl data set? And should we have a cap where if we say after 10 copies of this, we're no longer issuing data cap for it? Since this comes with documentation, this comes with tooling, we're hoping to first bring this issue to light so that allocators can kind of take a look and say, is this a high value add? And then there'll be a proposal like, should we actually limit the number of copies that are stored for this common crawl? We're talking about 10, that's not finalized. We make this discussion, we'll kind of ask for more feedback. So again, just consider this the first update or first conversation on this. I'd love to hear any feedback. So if you're on this call and you have any thoughts, now would be the best time to share. All right. Well, with that, I'll kind of circle back. Mike, I know we got to come of your issues, hash, some of them. If you guys have any additional Again, the best way to get the rapid response is the comment in your issue or in the allocator Slack channel. Again, DMs usually fork, they get really tricky to triage. So leaving the comments in that allocator channel is probably the best, most recommended way to get the fastest response as we kind of come through. So we'll check chat one more time and see if there's anything out. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for participation in this program. You'll see the data cap go out for the Lotus ones that are going through. Ash, Mike, I'm going to follow up on yours to make sure that we're getting those back in the system. Again, leaving the comments is the best way to get those with the bookkeeping, with the storage retrieval, and it's just going through as quickly as we possibly can. To all of you on the call, thanks for everything you do. We're here to help. I wish you all the best. Thank you again, everyone. Friendly hellos, welcome to the second allocator call taking place on August 6th. This mirrors the agenda that we had in the morning call. And what we're going to talk about are these points. First is looking at the foundations org wide strategy, high level, kind of get your input on things that you might want to make sure that we put on the roadmap before we kind of release and draft it. The second, we'll be talking about a new proposal that was filed by Fiddle. This has to do with the open data pathways refinement. So what questions are we having in the applications to make sure that we make this as easy as possible for the clients? SPs, allocators, and governance teams looking at it. Then we'll check in on the renewal process. There are some that are going through. They're just waiting for Lotus signing, and there's others that are still in the review queue. Some of the morning session went to allocators on the call asking specific questions like, hey, can you pull up my application? Can you tell me what I'm missing? Can you give me any feedback? So happy to do that again with anybody on the call now. Then we'll end with just a quick check-in on what's looking like with new allocators applying to the process and check back in on common crawl data and what makes sense for the program. If there's any other topics that you want to see added, just ask a question in chat, stick a hand up, and we also save plenty of time at the end of the call. So with that, this call is August 6th. The next one will be taking place on 20th of August. The slides, I'll drop these right here in chat. They can also be found in Slack. So if you want to grab this, you can follow this link to the Google Calendar, add it, and just make sure that you always see when these are taking place. And then check in on metrics. So if we look at the last two weeks since our call on the 23rd, we've seen seven new clients' applications get processed, which resulted in 18 PIBs of data cap distributed. And that came from those 51 total active allocators out of 72 who are in the program right now. So good week, hard charging. High level. This is what the foundation is working on for its high level goals for 2023 is that the foundation is positioning to make Filecoin work seamlessly. So the way that we're approaching this with Phil Plus is really listening to feedback that we get from some of our partners with APAC, with storage providers, obviously any feedback that you give to Galen, myself, the Fiddle team. And one of the goals that we're working on is one, make the day rather than taking a week or two,
or for Filecoin's long-term sustainability. What we're really looking at is like, how are we partnering with the SPs, with the allocators, with the clients to make sure that this is all kind of gliding out? In chat, Kenneth, is it me or is the host jittery? Well, I haven't had coffee in a few hours. Is my video cutting out at all? Am I lagging? Give me a thumbs up if I'm not lagging. Give me a thumbs down if there's anything going on with the audio video. All right. Usually that's how it goes as soon as we call it out of this problem. If anything changes, let me know. The regulatory headwinds. This is something that the foundation really prioritizes with making sure that incidents like ST Phil or what's going on with like the SEC in the States, really whatever we can do to make sure that everyone is informed of the benefits and value that comes from this decentralized network and peer-to-peer -peer file sharing really goes a long way. So the foundation will be leaning into this and whatever we can do to help from the foundation from the Phil Plus would be our goal. So look for more roadmaps, very similar to how Fiddle has put up their tooling to make sure that you have what you need. All right, first proposal, just flagging this so you see that it came through. KZ from Fiddle filed this early this morning, late last night. And what this is, is a proposal around the data prepare collection information. So right now, when we ask for information from a client on what's about to be stored, there's not a lot of helpful detail. So if you take a look inside of this proposal, he proposes some background on what kind of process questions should be updated in that template to make sure that the independent data that we're pulling from these applicants is succinct, allows you to coordinate with the SPs quickly and effectively, and tries to make this audit process as quickly as possible. So if you haven't seen it already, it's issue 125. I'll put it here in chat as well. Please give any feedback. If you think that this is too much data to collect, let it be known. If you think that this is great, simple thumbs up. Not liking it, thumbs down. We're really looking for your input on this one. It should be a relatively small change for the allocators, but hopefully we'll get more information as it comes through. So you'll see there's the English version, and then we had a translation version posted now. So any feedback on this, it's open for your comments and discussion, and it's meant to have more of a streamlined approach for when we're pulling this data out of these applications. I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions or thoughts on this before we go on to data cap refresh. Too simple. All right. Data cap refresh, and this probably impacts most people that are on the call. We're going to start breaking them down by week. That way, if anyone's kind of waiting, we're not going to be holding you back. You can see that Galen made an issue, I think two or three days ago, and he listed the allocators that are awaiting that refresh and the amounts that go through. What we're just waiting on right now, the distributions are pending, waiting for a Lotus root key holder signature. So that should be coming through, if not tonight, early tomorrow, or it might have already come in right before I hit this call. But the allocators that were currently in that refresh queue have all been reviewed, have their issues updated. What I'm doing right now is anybody who's not on this list or in this issue, I'm putting together another update for all of those allocators who are waiting. What I don't want to do is have anybody that's provided that information and is just waiting to hear back what they need from the watchdog, the root key holders, the governance. So I'll put that together tomorrow and publish it to Slack. Right now, we're just blocked on bandwidth between the processing of applications, the data cap renewal, the changes to the program. So we're prioritizing these data cap refresh to get these out the door to get you set. Realize how important this is for working with the communities. So we're putting that priority on it. To help you go faster, the best advice and tips I can give you is when you make your data refresh request, please spell out these four points in clear detail with links to where to find the data. This is probably the most helpful way that I can get this facts tracked for you. They're gonna wanna see where's the bookkeeping that was done on these clients. The second thing they're gonna wanna see is the SPs that were used. The third is what was the distribution schedule that this data cap was allocated and what was the retrievability. Now, when these come through, what we're looking for on retrievability is an increasing percentage. You know, we heard a feedback, we took the feedback on Spark, that it takes a while for that data to be retrievable and to work that out. So if we're seeing retrievability rates start at zero and then go up to 15 and 20, 
that's positive signs in the right direction as we work our way up to these much higher numbers. So please spell out, hey, I started with retrievability of 13. Now I'm at retrievability 30, 40, 50. That goes a long way in fast tracking and stops that watchdog question. The second is there should be bookkeeping for every application. Now it's okay if you're using some Google form or something off that GitHub template, but that should still be posted so that way when the watchdog comes through, they can see that communication where you're making sure that the applicant is maintaining the standards that you set forward. So in that refresh, please link to the applications that came through. If they're not in GitHub, please provide where that took place so they can be publicly audited. Third, the SPs. We realize that when you set this up with the client, they may dictate which SPs they're gonna use and in reality, different ones are, are used. Spell that out that the client said they were gonna use in this regions and these SPs. In reality, these were using and provide an explanation or a description. That's what the watchdog is looking for is that description on it. And then fourth is that distribution schedule. What the watchdog is looking for is that you didn't just release two petabytes to somebody who's never been in the program before, that you're scaling that up, and if not, the reason why. And all these match back to what standards you put forward in the application. So if you spell these four points out with links on where to go, it makes it so much faster for that watchdog account to go through there, audit these, put what's needed, and get you on the right track. And what we're hoping to do is get to a point where these start pushing out on a weekly basis. So those of you that have waited, we've had to work out a lot of bugs in this first iteration, and then that way they kind of get addressed. So on the morning call, there were some folks that wanted to look at their applications or had very specific questions. This time is yours. So if there's anything you wanna see, whether it's yours or someone else's, please link it, chat, I'll be happy to dive in. Anything comes up and you want to discuss, literally here for you for the next couple of minutes here. All right. If you were an allocator that did not get your data cap refresh, or if you're coming to the program new and would like to join as an allocator, this section is for you. So essentially, we have 72 active allocators in the program right now. And of those 72, I would say the majority, 50 plus, are allocating in this market, or excuse me, this manual review process where the client submits the application, the allocators review and distribute the data cap. What this means is there's, there's not a very high need for additional manual allocators. So what we've had to do is prioritize time and bandwidth to focus on applications that are doing something different than that manual process. So what this means is anybody that's building their own automated pathway, Anybody who's making a market approach or an experimental approach, we're really helping them and making sure that they're pushed through and deprioritizing add more of these active manual allocators. Because if there is a client that wants to bring the data, they have 50 plus choices on where to take it right now. They can also go to the enterprise pathway with Fiddle. So if you submitted an application to join the program as a new allocator, this is why you haven't had that allocator onboarding or you haven't had it go through. It's because we're kind of reaching this point where we have enough, if not too many, of these manual pathways. So I'd like to pause and see if this impacts anybody on the call, if they have any questions on the application process or what to expect for next steps. Um, hi, this is Kenneth. Um, I'd like to ask, like, uh, for the new allocators, what would they be expecting? A sort of email or something to actually proceed forward? If I'm hearing your question correctly, what will be the expectations of the new allocators? Will it be how we talk to them or what their role in the program will be? Uh, no, uh, I, I, I said, after, the, after they submit the application uh, to be the new allocator, um, what will be their 
uh, what will they expect from the response? Or should they just take a look at the GitHub issue? Yeah, the, the GitHub issue will be where we'll kind of leave those comments. Because essentially what we have to do on the back end is when we get these applications, we have to do our KYC audit, find out who they are, and then we'll take a look and say, okay, we have this new application that comes in. I'll pull this one at random. So this fun club here, and then they're going to have like a request for allocation, what type. And so this type right here that I pulled at random, this request for allocator, this really isn't a type, this RFA. So I'm assuming that they mean manual. And then what we look at is like, okay, they have an allocated pathway. And then we'll leave the comments here on this proposal. So to answer your question, all of the comments will be listed right there on the GitHub on next steps on KYC. Oh, great. Thank you. Good question, Kenneth. Thank you. And the last item, just for your awareness and feedback, was we've noticed a lot of data cap being stored for essentially the same open data set. So if we look at Common Crawl, we might have 20, 25, 30 copies of duplicate data stored within the same basic regions. So one of the ideas that some of the teams are discussing is do we have a limit on the amount of data sets that we're crawling that are identical? So there's gonna be a proposal file looking for your feedback is what's the right number? Is it 10? If we split them up by regions, does that make sense? What we're trying to do is make sure that the data that we're onboarding is actually helpful and we're not just duplicating the same data 25 times in the same region. So we've talked about this in the last call, just wanted to flag this for additional input before the proposal was written, and then I'll link when the proposal is. But if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear this before this gets written as a proposal. Um, hi. So the other time we actually talked about uh, locality being uh, uh, the, a factor mm -hmm. of consideration, but I think the other factor of consideration is that making use of IPFS, you can actually download the entire file faster with many contributors. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think when we write this proposal, Kenneth, I'd love to have you add that input. I'll check with the engineering teams that do that too with the IPFS side and find out what is the right number. Does the speed increase after four, after two, after 10? And that's a good one that we could bake into it. Numbers by region and taking into account retrievability metrics. And I appreciate you adding. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Kind of a quick call as we kind of go through this on these hot summer days. I'll open it up. If anybody has any thoughts, questions, or comments, the floor is completely yours. Batman, yes. Thank you for the reminder. I was going to post that. So what I talked with the Fiddle team about with the incentive test net was kind of two parts is how do we look at structuring this so you could have this for testing of hypothesis is also kind of going forward. I've asked Will to kind of echo back and I'll see if I can get a reply on Thursday and I'll share that with us in the public Slack. Part of the delay for not having an answer for you tonight. A lot of us were out of the office last week at an offsite. And so we're still waiting for that confirmation. But I think what you're implying is can we have that set up for hypothesis testing with FIPS, with programs? And so I think that work is being scoped and I'll find out who the POC and test channel is by Thursday when I talk with Will and I'll go back. That man, thanks for that question. And I'll post that in Slack for everybody. Last friendly call. Okay. Well, those of you that have the data cap refresh, you should see that hit the counts, if not tonight or tomorrow, immediately as it comes through. Those of you that weren't on the list, we'll be finalizing those. Any questions, please let us know in the allocator channel on Slack. And as always, thank you for all that you do. I'm grateful for it. I'm looking forward to great things to come.
Cheers, everyone.